Hey everyone, welcome to Two Car Pros. Uh, SEMA Day 1, or actually this is uh, the day before SEMA, so it's Halloween. Happy Halloween everyone out there. Uh, I wanted to do this video starting kind of our SEMA journey. So, so this is going to be the first day, and if you're anything like me, uh, you need a clean car to drive on a road trip. So um, that's just kind of how my brain works. I know it's a little bit weird. Uh, if you wash your car before you take it on the road trip, hit that like button so I know I'm not alone. Let's get to it. Here's my Tesla Model 3 performance, and as you can see, oh yeah, those are all bug spatters and the windshield dirty, and I really don't want to look through a dirty windshield. This bad boy needs a wash and a wax, and look, the mirrors get so dirty. That's all dirt, so it all needs to be cleaned off, and the back of this thing always gets dirt on it like crazy. So, let's get to washing. All right, all washed and waxed. You can see it is much better now. I also have it charging because we're going to need this thing up to the absolute maximum of 308 miles if we want to make it to Baker. So it is Halloween. I think I'm going to go home, hand out some candy, and then tomorrow morning we're getting an early start. All right, next morning, 816, we have 297 miles in the battery. Uh, looks like it's routing us to Yermo. There's 20 superchargers, at least available right now, and then off to Vegas. But there is another station here in Baker. I think we're going to stop at that one as well, um, just because I don't want to get to Vegas with no charge. So we're going to get to, it says we're going to get to Yermo with 37% left. Let's, uh, let's see if that's accurate. I bet, I bet it's not, I bet it's much less. All right, been driving for about an hour now. I am on the 15, uh, just passing Riverside. So I'm about here in the journey. So far, I've been pretty smooth, a little bit of traffic. Um, you know, people just going really slow in the fast lane for some reason, you know, the speed limit 65. And people going, you know, 50 in the fast lane. Might not sound like a lot, but it adds up and, you know, the traffic backs up. But it honestly, it hasn't been too bad. And uh, this isn't even the bad part. The The part that I'm dreading the most about this, this road trip is the Cajon Pass. And that's like, that's probably the most notorious spot for traffic to build up. Because if it builds up and there's some sort of accident or disaster, you're done. There's no way to turn around. There's no way you can just call it and come back. There's no way you can get off and get something to eat, maybe watch it, wait for it to clear up. No, you're just sitting. Um, so I will let you know when we're going through that. Hopefully that'll be nice and painless. Um, fingers crossed on that. I also wanted to address an elephant that might be in the room. Uh, why didn't I just fly? I live in Orange County, California, so why don't I just take the 40 minute or so plane ride to Las Vegas? There's a few reasons. Reason A, I don't really like flying. It's not really my thing. Don't really like being squashed up against people. Don't really like being treated like a number. Just, it's not for me, you know? Uh, reason B, I get motion sick on planes pretty easy. That's self-explanatory. Reason C, I have a lot of stuff with me. I have my luggage, you know, just for my clothes and personal items. I have my laptop so I can edit the video you're watching right now. And I also have my camera bag with all my camera crap in it, which has a ton of stuff in it that's super fragile and I don't want it to uh, be broken or anything like that. So. Uh, those are those are some three big reasons. Another reason is I uh, I really like my car and it is insanely comfortable to drive. Airplane seats aren't this comfortable. I gotta admit. Yeah, is it a five-hour journey instead of 45 minutes? Yeah. 
but I'd rather be comfortable for five hours than uncomfortable for 45. And you might feel differently. Let me know down below in the comments. What would you rather pick? I know what I'd pick. I'd pick this one right here for all those reasons and, and more I'm not even thinking of. So that might answer your question for you. Although this traffic's interesting. These truck drivers being in the fast lane and the second to the fast lane aren't helping things. Okay, so we just passed Highway 138 on the 15 North. We are very much in the Cajon Pass, as it were. Um, just about where the interstates diverge like this uh, from the left and right side. Uh, so far, so good. I, I've looked ahead on the GPS, no traffic, uh, no catastrophes, which is always a good thing. Um, and we're just cruising along in the fast lane here. I'm actually using autopilot, so, or I guess this isn't autopilot, it's auto steer, because I don't pay for the full self-driving thing, because it's, it's either 200 bucks a month, which doesn't seem kind of too bad if you only want to use it for one month, or it's like 20 grand for the upgrade, and that's just software that, that, that gets downloaded into your car. 20 grand for a piece of software, I don't know, I don't think that's worth it, and apparently it doesn't even, and you might say, oh, well, you know, that might be good for re or, uh, resale value, but apparently not so. Uh, it doesn't add more than uh, four grand or so onto a resale value of a car, so that really doesn't make any sense for to me to do that, so, yeah, but it looks like we have the hard, the hard part of this trip is already over. The Cajon Pass is basically defeated. We're going through it right this second. We're on that big curve. And uh, uh, so far, auto steer is doing pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm touching the wheel every 30 seconds or so because I have to or else it'll turn off. Um, and I think the Tesla behind me, there's a black Tesla behind me, Model 3, is also using it because I noticed he's the exact same distance away that I am from the car in front of me. So <laughs> it's pretty funny. Two, two Model 3s just cruising on the interstate, uh, auto steering together. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Um, but yeah, I'm excited. This this is already the hard part. Like, like I said, the hard part's already over, and now we're only 50 minutes away from our first charging trip. All right, our first charging station in Yermo at Eddy World. If you've never been to Eddy World before, it is basically... Uh, one of the coolest places on the I-15. It is like a huge gas station. I think it's the biggest gas station in California, I think. And uh, it is one of the few places along the 15 where they have superchargers. Wow, gas is 6.30 a gallon. Well, they got you. You're out in the desert. They got you. But here we are. First time I'm ever uh, supercharging, not, you know, not filling up. That's strange. That's a strange feeling. So we're all hooked up. This has up to 72 kilowatts of power are delivered off these. And I like how it's just like temporarily set up too. That's interesting. It's like they just added these and those have been there for a while but I pulled off on these ones because the cable is a lot thicker which tells me that the battery or the electricity being delivered there's much more of it and we can see that inside 275 miles are added per hour at this particular charger so it says it'll take 20 minutes to continue trip. I think I'm gonna wait uh, quite a bit longer just to get that insurance. Super cool exterior. <laughs> well, they've got Pete's Coffee. It's not open, but it is there. They do jerky and pizza and all kinds of interesting foods. There's all sorts of snacks, all sorts of types of drinks. I mean, this place is massive. And I happen to know the bathrooms are immaculate, and that's any reason enough for me to stop. All right, did my business. Got some snacks for the road. <laughs> this was like one of the smallest bags of pretzels they had. And I am a sucker for pretzels, and I'm also a sucker for nerds ropes. Got a few of those. I never find them where I live, so I kind of splurge whenever I do find them. 
It is saying, it's charging, you have enough energy to continue on your trip. Okay. So I'm actually pretty much done. You know, I was thinking too, we're only getting 71 kilowatt hours and it says those chargers over there that the other people, the smart people are charging at, are up to 150. So I might've made the wrong choice here on these, but the cables look so much thicker, but that doesn't necessarily mean anything. You know, I've had a thought as well. If I'm stopping in Baker, then I really don't need to have uh, too huge a charge uh, to get to Baker. Um, and hopefully by that time it's like lunchtime and I'll be able to crack open my lunch and enjoy it. Um, so I think I'm gonna do that. I think I'm gonna, it says I'll make it all the way to Vegas at this point. Um, and it's been fairly accurate so far, which is kind of shocking. Um, so I think I'm just gonna go and stop at Baker and enjoy myself there. Cause I think the charger there is a lot bigger um, and it'll be closer to lunchtime cause it's only 11 o'clock. So it'll probably be like maybe 11.30 by the time I get there. So let's go. Honestly, not bad. We have 230 miles range. We would make it to Las Vegas with 31% battery. We have 78 so far. So we went from like 40 to 78. Uh, in the time it took me to go to the bathroom, pick out a snack, uh, and come back here. Really not long at all. All right, Baker, California. This is, this is also where Alien Fresh Jerky is, although it's like way down that way. I won't be stopping there. Um, honestly, I didn't even need to stop here, but I thought it'd be a good idea. I thought this is interesting that they try to offset the charging with the solar. It's probably a good idea. Um, obviously all that soul, even that solar, all that solar, no way it'd provide enough charge for probably even one of these at the rate that this is going. That's what those are all for over there. And I like how they have the other electric vehicles over there. Like stay over there, Mustangs and Kias and such. Teslas are over here in the Tesla section. And this charger is going quite a bit faster. So that's at 102 kW, so that's like 380 miles an hour. It's gonna take 45 minutes to get to 100%. We probably won't wait that long. Alrighty, we have 283 miles. That's as near as makes no difference 100%. We're at 95%. Mm. And it's costed me $13 and 53 cents uh, to go to from wherever we were to now. Not bad. And, and best part of all, when we get to the convention, we should have 47% battery. Okay, so I am now in the thick of Las Vegas on the 15, just passing the new Raiders Stadium or the Allegiant Stadium, whatever you want to call it. Uh, I think it's probably time that I maybe admit something to you, the audience. I'm not really a Vegas guy. I don't really gamble. I don't really like clubs or nightlife of any sort. I'm a pretty simple guy. I like to go to bed early and I like to get up early and I like to go to work and then I like to go to the gym and go home. That's pretty much my life is work, hot rods, and the gym. That's just about it. That's the way I like it. This place is, um, you know, it's for some people and I get that, but uh, it is it's just not for me, you know? It's, there's just a lot of, um, just like a lot of lights and music and sound and all kinds of things. It's like a sensory overload um, for someone like me. And I mean, the, the last time I was here was with a significant other like six years ago. I didn't like it then either. <laughs> okay, made it to the event. There's the Conrad. And the show is right over there. So it looks like I got a little bit of walk ahead of me. No biggie. All right, just picked up my badge from the media center. We're in the South Hall. Now we can go that way to the main floor. Holy cow. This place is way bigger than I thought. I think we're gonna start right over there in the South Hall entrance. We'll probably make our way up to Central. No way we're covering all this today. Walking uh, into South no, Hall. SEMA for the first time. Yeah. Wow. What to look at first? Wow. It's pretty overwhelming. There's honestly 
way too much to look at. But I do see a radiator booth. That's interesting to me. Oh, 60. Yeah, cold case radiators. I have one of these on my Camaro. I'm not shivering quite as much as this guy. That looks like a Bel Air radiator. That actually looks like the radiator I have on there. That's because it is. Direct fit and replacement fits all those models and the Camaro. It says it does LS swaps and big blocks. Wow. We got you covered. I bet this is a four core radiator. I sort of like the single fan design better. I have dual fan on now, and I think it's too loud. I think one bigger fan would be a lot quieter. I might look into that for the future. It looks like a twin turbo LS General Lee. Uh, looks like it's had a little bit of an accident. Looks like a wastegate blow off. <laughs> Here's a familiar friend of the channel, a DeLorean. Although this one's interesting because it is an EV. So they've gotten rid of the junk V6 that came with it and put in uh, who knows how many watts of power. A lot's the answer. That is a really cool dash. Center console. EV, EV swapping your old cars, especially a DeLorean. That car really needs it. Oh yeah, look. That's, a, that's an EV swap kit. Wow. No pricing. Oh, I bet it's expensive. <laughs> That's badass, though. So this product made by uh, CVF is a serpentine belt kit. So it'll take, this is for instance, the front of a big block Chevy, like the one we built. And it lets you put on a power steering alternator and da -da -da, AC bracket. All for like 700 bucks. Not bad to have everything all lined up and correct and really easy to service. Check it out, it even uses a separate pulley and serpentine belt for the AC rather than the other accessories. Very cool. So this is a more like a stock look, but it does have these really cool brackets. This is for our small block Ford that we built by the same company, CBF, for 600 bucks, and you get all these brackets and pulleys to hook up your water pump, your alternator power steering, and AC compressor. That might be a route we're going in the very near future. Now there is something I thought I'd never see in an auto show, an actual spinning DeLorean sign. I guess that's the new prototype. But let's look at the old, old classic first. I remember having this car like it was yesterday. For those of you who don't know, my first car was a DeLorean, so it was an automatic, and it was an 81. It's in France now. I obviously don't own it any longer, but the current owner keeps in touch with me. So this, if they are to be believed, and this car isn't just vaporware, this is what it's going to look like. So no stainless steel this time. Looks like the whole thing's stamped out of aluminum. And I think these things are going to be like 200 grand or so. That would be impressive. I would be shocked if I saw this on the street. Still cool. Check this out. This is an interesting take on the electric car modification process. Get rid of the engine, replace it with a motor, and hook it up to like a turbo 350 or something. Yeah, I know, I would too. That's super interesting. That's an interesting idea. Or where are you going to put the batteries? Well, I guess it depends on the battery. Yeah, so this is a lot. So that's the electric motor assembly. This is the 
battery pack kit. That's oh, a that's kit. It. This is a kit, and then the charger kit's back here. But look how hard it is to install. So I'm going to let you install this. You're going to make you're, it look so difficult. <laughs> nah, it's, a, it's above my pay grade. <laughs> you're you're yeah, going to install your first vehicle. Go ahead. I'm going to. Everything's over 100 miles is what we're going to guarantee. We have our brand new installation yeah. technician. It's so oh difficult. wait, put your finger in here. That's the safety. No. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh, that's the oldest trick in so, the book. <laughs> so you can't get shocked. That's your safety class. Uh -huh. And it's so difficult. My five-year-old can do this. Yep, that's right. My 10-year-old's going to be here tomorrow. Awesome. Yeah, let's snap in there. So there you go. Now I'm going to go over here. I want to click this switch on. Okay, he just built an electric vehicle. So we just turn the key, and that's two wires to the ignition. So then he hits the throttle. This is the OEM throttle. He's got plugged up to it. And now it's running. He's got a complete system running. Congratulations. This is an entire electric vehicle. Turn all over? Yeah, that's the torque converter in there. It's running. It's not in gear. A lot of people didn't believe that because there's thousands of wires, we've eliminated almost all the wires. So That's now good. you got the motor kit, the battery kit, and the charger kit. So basically and you got a power plant right here. Yeah, you got yeah. everything to make an electric vehicle run. That's a clever way to do it. But then you still have to change oil. Come on, guys. <laughs> Not if What's it's a manual. Every 100,000 miles. <laughs> every 100,000 miles. So look, any mechanic can install this. Easily. Yeah, very That's easy. what makes that clever because normally you'd have to get rid of the transmission, do a huge ass swap. Yeah. This, you just take an engine out, put a motor in its place, find a spot for the battery, and boom, yeah. you're in business. Yeah, and That's what clever. happens is it, it's our computer allows the OEM computer to just keep functioning for the ABS, oh. the power steering, because on the F-150 we built over there and the North Hall, mm -hmm. that thing is a brick. Until you install our system, the whole vehicle comes back alive because we talk to the vehicle, to that vehicle. That's interesting. So let's say you swap this in California. How do you get around smog? Uh, yeah, we do have to take it to smog and they hook yeah. it up to the tailpipe, which does not does exist. Does nothing. Right, well, they usually <laughs> plug in with an OBD2 now. They don't put like a sniffer up the tailpipe. They just yeah. plug into the yeah, OBD2 port. Yeah, we still have the OBD2. And, then it go, and it still gives a thumbs up like, hey, pass smog. I don't know about that, okay. but they do look under the vehicle. Right. Yeah, they check it out. I right. say, bro, you got enough caps. We can't pass you. Yeah, yeah exactly. They're going to be like, ah, yeah. oh, it's an error, uh, fail. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Cool. But all yeah, right. we did the first all-electric school bus in Gilroy, California. Uh, that worked and hauled children, and then we did the first box truck, and then the F-150s, the first yeah. step working F-150, yeah. is over there right now. Well, you got to think your market's enormous. 300 million gas-powered cars are, yeah. you know, could be swapped to this relatively easily, yeah. and the battery pack doesn't look too, too huge. Yeah, we're getting a lot of attention here lately. I bet. So, yeah. I bet. You see your company swapping out. Uh, Very cool. I'm pretty sure it's a Turbo 400. It's an old GM transmission, that's for sure. 308. How much horsepower does something like this make or torque? Uh, the horsepower on that's about 280 horsepower max. Okay. And then your torque's only going to be about 500 on a small. Only 500. But when you have first gear, yeah. you have to multiply that times three. Right. So it's over a thousand foot pounds of torque instant. Still 500 yeah. at the crank. <laughs> they use these turbo 400s is a turbo and races, 400s. so it yeah. can handle the torque. Oh yeah, of course. I mean, a 350 will as well, just not as long. <laughs> yeah, but we used to run direct drive and the motors were catching on fire and yeah. overheating. Yeah. But once you hook up to a transmission, all your problems go away. See, I like that. Trucks. I like the idea of an electric motor hooked up to a transmission. That's, that's really clever. Right on. Cool. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot. It's actually the law that I have to film all Roadrunner Superbirds, and it looks like this one's been Hellcat swapped. Check that out, look. They made use of the eight speeds selector off the trucks. That might be sacrilege to some of you, but I think it's a neat and a very smart way to do that. We of course remember my buddy's Hellcat 
friend of the channel when we did the uh, Hellcat oil, oil change. That was a lot of fun. Oh, it's an advert for HB tuners. Well, it worked because it definitely grabbed my attention. Oh my God, what a gorgeous car. Blueprint engines. In case you don't want to build one like we've shown on the channel, you can always go with Blueprint if you want to pay. That's for probably a Gen 1 Bronco. $18,000 ready to drop in. Unsure if it's power figure. Oh wait, it says right there, 365, 365 foot pounds. Not terrible out of a small block Ford, but boy, doesn't this look familiar? You know, I get a lot of people asking me, oh, why build an engine when you can just buy one? Well, ours didn't cost anywhere near 18,000, and ours made 440 horsepower and 440 foot pounds. But, uh, you know, if you're crunched for time or you just don't want to do it, Blueprint's a super great way to go. And of course, they don't just do Fords, they do LSs. There's a 427 for $13,299. A lot of people criticize me that you know, when I do builds, they're expensive. Our LS build is about half that. And how much horsepower? This does make a bit more power, though. This makes uh, about 100 horsepower more. But it's also a 427, not a 331. So I'm sure if we did a 7 liter uh, instead of a 5.3, it would make right around that. Maybe even more. Someday. Bang for the buck. These guys are great. Okay. Another 7 liter, supercharged, 800 foot pounds, or excuse me, 800 horsepower and 780 foot pounds for 35 grand. What does it come with? Oh, T56 manual transmission. Pretty cool to just, just, just drop it in and hit go. I mean, you still need to wire it and plumb it and stuff. This looks like a Hellcat engine. Yeah, not a Hellcat engine, but it is a Hemi. It's a 426 Hemi. Looks like a late model. How much do you want for 35 for this one as well? 825 horsepower, 750 foot pounds. Here we go. Now we're getting into the really crazy stuff. Big block Chevy. Looks like a tall deck, maybe. 1,000 horsepower NA, 23 grand. I guarantee we could make a big block with 1,000 horsepower NA for less than 23 grand. Maybe not a lot less, but less. I think it'll make money too. For you too. Look, it's just like we built. So we have AFR heads. These are obviously their own blueprint heads. And they made about 100 horsepower and 100 torque less. A little bit under 100 torque less, actually, for 5,800 bucks. That is cheap, though. 5,800 bucks for a small block Ford ready to go. I'm not sure ours was, because we have those AFR heads which amped up the cost. That's probably right around the same cost that we spent. And this one's built and ready and mailed to your door. Pretty cool. Edelbrock. Who doesn't love Edelbrock stuff? I got Edelbrock heads on my Camaro. Okay. Cool intake manifold for an LS, looks like. Whoa. Check that out. Chrome black, or black plasma and chrome plasma finishes. It's like for small block Chevy, maybe? Yeah. Oh, they make them for small block Chevys, big block Chevys, and Ford engines. That is an interesting finish. It looks even more wild in person. Those are cool. And they got matching carburetors, too. That is... Uh, if you're looking for flashy, that is maximum flashy. This is flashy. This is really flashy. Hey, <laughs> <laughs> They really did outdone themselves. Absolutely. I kind of dig it, though. 
This is what the aftermarket should be, man. Right? Yeah. I'll check that out. A supercharger kit for a 5.3 or 6.2 from 19 to 21 for like a Silverado. And it makes at the at the rear wheel for the 6.2, 548 horsepower with that. At the rear wheel. That's not crank. And it really doesn't look like it's too difficult to install. I really feel like you could do that in a garage. Not bad. And it's 50 state legal. That was my next question. Wow. Cool. So here's another EFI solution, a ProFlow 4 EFI. Now, this will let you make adjustments with an app with either iOS or Android, so you're covered. And check this out. It has a brain, has an ECM, all kinds of sensor, O2 sensor. And then it has an intake manifold where instead of the fuel injectors being here, where the carburetor hat would sit, where the carburetor would sit, it has them right over the ports, so the fuel is just injected right into the ports. It doesn't waste any time sort of in here on the intake. That's a cool design. That is a super neat idea. I like that a lot. It's available for basically all the popular engines. Well, outside, sir, something's happening. Donut contest? Send them out. Let's listen to what this thing does. It's gonna speak for itself. Yeah. Sponsor. Let's go see what's new under the summit booth. Check out that drag motor. Hot oh, dang. All kinds of stuff. You want to build your own turbo setup? Something custom? All summit racing parts. I'm sure we'll get there. Look, even a Summit branded turbo. I love Summit. Summit branded distributors, HEI, and mechanical turbos. That's why you come by the Summit booth. They always have good stickers. <laughs> so, there's the end of the first day. There is so much there, it's not even funny. I think what I'm going to do now is head back to the hotel get something to eat and uh, relax and unwind. I've already driven like five hours today and I've done three hours of convention, so I'm, I'm pretty exhausted. So, gotta take care of yourself, you know? All right, back in the car after about four hours at SEMA or so. I know that doesn't seem like a lot, but trust me, it's a lot. It is, my first impressions of being at the show is Holy cow, there's absolutely no way I'm gonna be able to see everything, even in four days. I, there's buildings I, I haven't even gone in yet that are equally as big as the halls I was in. I did just basically the South Hall. I still have the East and North, I believe, and then this one right over here, I have to do too. Uh, this is a big undertaking. This is way, way, way more than I thought previously. Um, yeah, I'm hoping I'm doing a good job. Please let me know below in the comments if you uh, if there's anything you want to see in particular. Maybe you see other people uh, cover it. Maybe you want, you want to see a little bit better or something different about it. Let me know. Because honestly, it is just so much. It is it is just the definition of 
of, of too much, you know? So it is, uh, I mean, but it's cool though, right? It's, it's definitely a really, really, really cool experience. Uh, everyone is super nice too, especially the SEMA people themselves. Because I've never been, it's my first SEMA, and uh, I didn't know where to go for media stuff to get my badge, wherever that is. And uh, everyone was so helpful, it's ridiculous. Everyone's been cool that I've talked to. All the people at booths have been incredible. It has been a very pleasurable experience. It's just, it's a lot, you know? The convention is enormous. When, when you think it ends, it, another hall opens up, and boom, there's even more. <laughs> um, I can tell you one thing. I am absolutely beat. I, I need to go back to uh, my room, have a have a beer and a burger, and get some sleep. That's what I need. Okay, made it to the hotel parking structure. End spot, of course. Nothing but the best for my baby. And then we walk this way to the hotel. And I've already checked in on my phone with the app, so I should just be able to go to my room. Pretty nice place. Okay, hotel room tour. Bathroom looks pretty snazzy. I was worried for a second because I only saw a tub and no shower. There's me. Nice double sink. Toilet. There's the shower. Tied me on this door. Pretty cool. Little coffee maker area. That's interesting. They have coffee bean and tea leaf sorted coffee items, but downstairs they literally have a Starbucks. Oh, there's a little mini fridge in here. Oh, cool. I usually turn those off because they're kind of noisy. Decent sized closet. size bed. I didn't need two beds, it's just me. Pretty good TV. Actually, it's probably bigger than the TV I have at home. And then my room, my view of nothing. But I am on the ground floor, which I prefer. That is just my preference. It's like a comfy chair. Bed seems decent. Cool. Well, I'm going to do a little bit of editing and then I think we're going to go to dinner. <laughs> outside my room, outside the hallway rather, is that courtyard. We were up there earlier. It's a little dark in this courtyard, but that's okay. It's much brighter in person. I know I said a beer and burger earlier, but boy, does Mexican food sound amazing. My drink came. It's made of beer and happiness. The chips and salsa are fantastic. I can't wait for my food. Carne asada quesadilla with rice and beans, with peppers and tomatoes. Mm. What's not to love? Okay, that place was super, super good. I might be back later this week, but we need to get back to the room and edit this video that you're watching. Okay, so that was a wrap on SEMA. That was a ton of fun. I can't wait to get back out there tomorrow. But what I'm gonna do now is edit this video, upload it, set it to go live tomorrow morning, and I'm gonna get some sleep. Thank you so very much for watching. If you wanna catch the rest of this SEMA stuff or even our LS Swap Bel Air I'm gonna be doing when I get back, make sure you're subscribed. I'll see you next time.